All right, let's have a look at question number three. We are told a June 2009 Toronto Star study of 92 downtown Toronto Parkers attempted to resolve scientifically the question of who is most competent at pulling into a parking space, men or women. It reported that women are better at parallel parking, though they take longer. Researchers counted the distance from the curb in inches and reported an average distance of 9.3 for women and 11.1 for men. Okay, big question. The data are found in, okay, they're found on D2L. You guys can have a look at them. They're from the textbook, chapter 21. We're asked to respond to the star's claim. Do you accept it? Make your case carefully and properly at a 5% level of significance. Check any assumptions that you can test. And for those you can't assume the conditions are sufficiently satisfied and get a confidence interval. Okay, what are we dealing with here? We're talking about parallel parking and how far people park from the curb. Keyword here is we're looking at average distance and we have two groups, women and men. Now, anytime we are looking at averages between two groups, two populations, the first question we got to ask ourselves is, are we dealing with dependent sampling or independent sampling? Now, when I look at this, supposedly, I don't know, half or roughly half of these 92 Toronto Parkers were women and the other half roughly were men. Is there anything in this problem to suggest that the women had anything to do with the men? In other words, did the choice of women have anything to do with the choice of men in this study? No, there's nothing to suggest that. So I would assume that the women were randomly and independently picked from all female Torontonians and the same thing with the men. So the two groups have nothing to do with each other. All right, if that's the case, the test we're running is going to be the two sample t-test. Now, the null hypothesis is all about the difference in the means. And um, I need to set up my difference. And what are we trying to prove here? We're trying to prove whether women are better parallel parkers than men. And if that's the case, men park a further distance from the curb. And you can set your difference up however you like. But again, I always try and set it up to expect a positive difference. Now, my null hypothesis is always that there is no difference versus that men park further from the curb on average than do females, in which case I'm expecting a positive difference. So this one implies no difference. This one implies men are worse parkers. <laughs> okay, men park further from the curb. What's my alpha? What are we looking at? 5% level of significance in the problem. And we have to calculate the test statistic. Now, um, in order to do this, we're going to need some summary information from Minitab. But hey, look, we're all lazy. I'm going to show you the hand calculation, which you're going to show me in your assignment. But in order to do this, we're going to need some information from Minitab. We're going to go in and do that here in a second. Anyway, your test statistic says, take the difference in the sample means. They turn out to be for men. And make sure you got it set up the same way as in your hypothesis up here. All right, so here's the uh, average of the sampled males, the average of the sampled females, minus zero because that's the number that's in my statement of hypothesis, divided by the standard um, deviation of the differences, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, what does it say? It says we got to take the standard deviation, in this case of the men, square it, divide by the number of men, and standard deviation squared of the women, divided by number of women. Plug it all in your calculator and you should get a T value, a test statistic of 0.9. Now, I've got these data open in many tabs, so let's go see where we are with this. Here's the data, and what do we got? Yeah, we got 45 males and 47 females in this study. 
we go to basic statistics. I just cut straight to the chase. I want a two sample t test. My data are in their own columns and pay attention to how you choose it. I set my difference as males minus females. Uh, the difference is zero. I want to know whether the difference is positive. So the hypothesized difference is that there's no difference versus I'm trying to prove that men park further from the curb than women, in which case it will be a positive difference. I know nothing about equal variances, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. I'm going to say OK. And typically you would look at box plots. Uh, males look pretty good. Females look a bit skewed. We'll talk about that later. All right, now here's the results of my two sample t-test. So I'm going to bring that into my Word document and let's have a look. Okay, so the test statistic is based on this formula. It should work out to 0.9. That's what I have right here. And to be truthful, I just plugged in the numbers here. And I went to Minitab and said, Ooh, I'm not even plugging that in my calculator. The answer should be 0.9. However, before you go jumping up and down for joy, make sure that you check the hypotheses. So what do we got? I got males versus females. Males minus females. That's how I set it up. And it gives me an estimate for the difference, by the way, 1.1 inches, 1.01 inches. And then it says it's doing, it's testing that the difference is equal to zero versus it's greater than zero. Always check this. All right, my test statistic is 0.9. Minitab tells me that the degrees of freedom is 89. And there's a formula that's showing in your notes as to how this gets calculated. And I told you in the notes that we're not going to be expected to calculate this by hand because the formula is too crazy. And Minitab gives us a p-value. Now, really, at the end of the day, you know, the question is the same. Is p less than my alpha, which in this case is 0.05? And is that p-value, 0.186, a smaller number than 0.05? Five. Answer is no. Anytime it's no, I fail to reject my null hypothesis. So if I'm failing to reject, what am I really saying? I'm really saying that there is no significant difference in the average distance that males or females park from the curb when they parallel park in the city of Toronto. Okay, so that's pretty well it right there. Now, then it says check any assumptions, and it says obtain a 95% confidence interval on the difference. Does it agree with the test of hypothesis? Okay, I'm going to deal with the, um, with the confidence interval first. So I'm going to go back to Minitab here now, and I'm going to go back into my two sample T. Because I'm looking for a confidence interval, and in this course, we are only ever interested in two-sided intervals. Make sure your alternate hypothesis here says not equal to. I'm saying OK, and yeah, my graph is going to pop up again. Get rid of that. And this is the confidence interval that I'm looking for. All right, I'm bringing that into my Word document. And what does this thing tell me? Well, it says that the true difference in the average distance from the curve falls between a minus 1.23 and a positive 3.26. Now here's the thing. Is zero in this interval? Yes. Zero lies in this interval. If zero lies in the interval, that means there is no significant difference in, in our case, the average distance from the curb. And this completely agrees with what we just figured out from the test of hypothesis. All right, other things about the um, assumptions. The assumptions are that the males and females in this study were randomly and independently picked from the two populations. And the two populations here are male Torontonians and female Torontonians, presumably, who can drive. 
All right, I look at my, okay, so um, I've, I've randomly and independently picked from them. I assume that that's correct because I got nothing else to, to go by. The thing I do have to check on is whether my data are normally distributed. And they had to be normally distributed in both groups. The male data look pretty normal. The female are a bit skewed. We would be wise to check that. So let's go back over here. We've already seen the box plots and if I run a normality test let me do the males usually a Ryan Joyner although I could do Anderson Darling now Ryan Joyner says p-value is greater than 0.1 Ryan Joyner says the male data is normally distributed okay that one's okay now if I come back in here again and this time check the female data Ooh, we got a problem. The p-value is less than 0.05. So the female data is not normally distributed. That has implications for our uh, conclusions. And I'll write up something here later. But basically, the female data are not normal. And what that really means is that the conclusions we've made from our study or from our, our statistical test, our conclusions may not be valid ones. And here's the thing. Your t-test only has power to reject the null hypothesis when data are truly normal. Female data are not. That may be impacting our p-value. If the female data had been nice and normal, we might have expected a slightly smaller p-value. All right, so that's it for that one.